Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've been offline so to speak for a couple of weeks and uh, this is a project that I've actually been working on for two to three months and I'm excited to share it with you finally. I have a light up interactive card and there are several components to this video so that's why it is longer than some of the ones I've published in the past. So this does involve using a Cricut file to create the templates and some of the pieces for the card. And I will show you the simple medium that I use to create the lamp oil effect. I will also be showing, demonstrating how to set up a parallel circuit with Chibi Electronics starter kit, which isn't quite as difficult as it may sound. And of course, assembling the entire card. So let's get started. Starting from Cricut Design Space, I'm going to pull up the project that I've created and I will share this file with you in case you want to replicate this later. So once I open the custom file, I'm going to show you the pieces to it. One is one that will cut out a cardstock, which is the dark gray one. When I click on the white one, this is one that will actually draw the pattern and it will be on Yupo paper and it will end up being cut down to slightly smaller than the cardstock that will be cut from the gray, dark gray example. Then there are the lava lamp bases. I created some in the same color, which you could hide if you wanted to create bases in different colors, which is the one on the right, which I just clicked on. But otherwise, I'm going to show you the setup of the machine. So I have my cardstock, Yupo paper, and the metallic adhesive foil sold by Cricut. And what I'm doing is inserting a special tool that I bought, and I'll link to this below. It allows you to add any size of marker that you that can fit in this barrel. And in this case, I was using a Sharpie marker. So now that I am getting this started, I'm going to put in the mats in the order of the material that I need to either draw on or cut. The first one being the one I'm drawing on, which is the Yupo paper, which I'm drawing on with the Sharpie marker. So it doesn't matter what the material is set to because all it's going to be doing is drawing. So what I'm going to be showing you is kind of a picture in picture of what's going on with the machine and what you're seeing on the screen while that's going on. If you have worked with Cricut cut files before, you probably don't really need to see this, but for anyone that is considering purchasing a machine or just got one for the wants to see some alternate ways to use it, this can show you how that looks on the screen as well as on the machine while it's doing its drawing or cutting or what have you. So now I've finished uh, doing the UPO paper part and I'm inserting the next material, which is the adhesive foil. So once it's in there, one of the things you have to do is select the correct material. So I'm going to scroll all the way down the list until I get to adhesive foil in the vinyl section. And then I will click, or sorry, tap on the button on the Cricut machine to go. And then it will start the process of cutting on that material. And the setting allows it to be cut so that the lining stays intact while the adhesive foil only gets cut and then you can peel it away. And I didn't really capture that part being cut as much as the end when I was pulling out the material. At this stage there's only one more part to be cut out and it's going to be the cardstock. And although I'm cutting a purple colored excuse me, purple colored cardstock. At the end, I ended up changing to a completely different color scheme, but the steps I followed are exactly the same. It's just the fact that I ended up cutting out a different color cardstock in the end. So now I'm showing some of the samples that I created while I've been working on this project, and I experimented with some different cardstock. Uh, not, I guess backgrounds is really the way to put it. So I used white, I tried black and craft, actually created the craft example to completion, but I still wasn't satisfied with the way it looks. So I decided when I created this video to post that I would do it with a color scheme that I was happier with. So what I'm showing you right now is a empty mini quiche tray. 
I am a fan of many, many quiches, as you can probably tell. It makes an excellent temporary palette, so to speak, where you can create a medium. And the medium I used for the lamp oil is a combination of Ranger Glossy Accents. And then I'm going to be adding the alcohol inks in five different colors into the wells where I added the glossy accents. And once I've added all the colors, the next thing I'll do is take a wooden craft stick and stir all those up so they're mixed evenly. And this gives me a chance to adjust if I don't think the color is strong enough. And then the next step is I'm going to the piece of Yupo paper that's already been drawn on and those outlines are there as a guide for me to know where to put the medium down, which I'm putting down with a palette knife. And it's not that I have to really be that exact. Um, I just want to be sure that I at least fill up the space all the way up to that gray line so that when I put the die cut cardstock over the top, I don't see any gaps around the edges. So that's why it's the file is designed like it is so that I made sure that there's plenty of room as long as you color, you know, add the gel medium, so to speak, all the way to the edges. And now that I have my base gel colors down, the next thing I'm doing is adding the contrasting colors. And I only created two contrasting colors for this. Uh, one is a bright pink, one is an orange color, and I will have all the supplies linked below so you can see exactly which colors I use as far as the alcohol inks. And what I do is just use the opposite end of a paintbrush and I just tap it in the color and just slightly touch it to the medium that I've already laid down. And I go, I go with a very light touch at first and that's because it tends to spread out over time. Not too much, but it's really hard to take it back. It's kind of like adding too much color. You can go light at first and add more, but you can't take it away later. So something to keep in mind should you decide to do this. And by the way, you don't have to make this into a light up interactive card. You could finish just the steps up to the assembly of the card front and you'd probably be perfectly fine if you're not interested in doing the light up part. But my whole idea behind purchasing this kit is I wanted to try, try it and make the lava lamps light up. So now you see the medium is completely dry and I'm taking the, that piece of Yupo paper and I'm trimming off around the edges so it won't be sticking out around the edges of the coral card stock that I went back and cut later. And you can see it fits perfectly over those lamps. And now I'll just glue that down. And after that is done, I'm going to add the foil pieces that I cut out of the Cricut adhesive foil above at the tops of the lamps and bottoms. So since this is more or less turned into somewhat of a science experiment or a lesson, I thought I'd talk a little bit about uh, lava lamps in the brief history while I'm attaching the foil adhesive to the tops and bottoms of the lamps. A lava, the lava lamps were actually created in 1963 by an accountant in the UK whose name is Edward Craven Walker. In 1992, his or the company that was making lava lamps was taken over by a company called Mathmos, and that's M-A-T-H-M-O-S. They actually still sell lava lamps today. They're made, lava lamps are made with a special colored wax mixture called a bolus inside a glass vessel. An incandescent bulb heats up the mixture, causing the wax blob to rise up, and then it sinks as it cools down when it rises to the top. So, therefore, there's a history behind the lava lamp. Now, as you can see, I'm creating the base for the card, and what I did is cut out two pieces of thin craft foam using the same cut file so that I would have some distance or uh, actually some space between the base of the card and the top of the card to create the Chibitronics circuit. So, as you can see, I'm drawing in the space uh, 
using that foam as a template so I know exactly where those lamps are going to be when they're on that base. And then in the top right hand corner, I'm drawing out a square where the battery will be located. And if you don't want to do the, the light up part of this card, this is where you could stop and just make a non-interactive card. But since this is an interactive card, I'm going to go on with the rest of it. So I'm pulling out the pieces of the Chibitronics starter set and I have to say as intimidating as it may sound it actually is a lot of fun to play with and I really once I had gotten the hang of doing it through the first time I didn't find it was so difficult to recreate this again and the whole idea behind a parallel circuit is you could think of it as two parallel streets that never cross it's kind of the same concept with a tape is when you're using that copper tape you want it to have a positive side and a negative side because each one of those lights has a positive and negative node and they have to be taped down which which will make more sense in, in a minute when you see it. I'm creating a piece of paper to create a battery cover so it's just a small piece of paper that is scored twice in size just large enough to fit around that battery. And since there is, you want to keep track of which side is the positive and negative side, I drew a plus to represent the positive side of the battery and a minus to represent the negative side, which will go up in the top right hand corner. Now I have pulled off a piece of the copper adhesive tape. The nice part about this is that it does have an adhesive so you don't have to fool with trying to add an adhesive to this. And it's very easy to cut and the kit actually recommends that you do exactly what I'm doing here in the picture. I'm splitting it down the middle to create my parallel circuit. Now that I have the two pieces of copper tape separated, I'm going to start by placing the first one down. I am starting from the lava lamp that is the furthest away from where the battery will be in the end and I start by placing that piece of copper tape down as close to the center of the first lamp uh, where the lamp will be so to speak and I'm going to extend the tape out to the middle one and as you will see as I go through this process what I start doing is bending the copper the copper tape so that I can go in the line that I need it to go but I have to be careful at no point to ever cross the two pieces of tape they must stay separate at all times and that's the key thing to remember through the entire process and the reason I put them both down at that one end is just to make sure that my spacing was good because the lights are only so big and the copper pieces can't be so far apart that you can't um, touch both sides of it with a little light. So that's what those little triangular pieces are. Those are the actual LED lights that come with the kit. The wider part is the positive side and the smaller point is representative of the negative side. So what I found uh, during my prior experiments with this is in order to get that tape going in a different angle once you get started is it's easier to use an object like I did. I was using the back side of a of a pin blade in order to not cut the tape but make it easier to angle it. You can bend the copper tape back on itself like I'm doing here. Kind of press it down and then fold it over like I'm doing right now in order to get it to go in the direction that you need it to go. So at all times the key thing is to make sure again that you never have the tape cross at any point and also that the spacing between the two lines is not so large that you cannot put the lights on it. And as I'm getting closer to the space where the battery is supposed to be, I have to do some planning around how to place that battery in the corner so that I can get the tape in the right spots. Uh, the negative 
part of the tape, which is the bottom, needs to be aligned so that it's going to be on the bottom side of that piece of paper, but it has to be on the inside. And the positive side, which is sticking up at the moment, in, needs to end up on the inside top of that piece. I mean, right now I'm holding it over the top to kind of get an idea of how to get that to go to make it work. And I almost cut that too short. I ended up making it work out overall with the tape that I had and not have to start over, thankfully. But as you can see, it took a little bit of doing to make that happen. So the bottom piece, which is the negative, will touch the negative side of the battery, is just straight in on the bottom. So that part was easy. Then in order to make sure that the copper tape that I wanted to be on the positive side didn't also touch the negative side of the battery, I put a piece of tape over top of it on the bottom to make sure that it did not come into contact with the wrong side of the battery. Now, at this point I'm attaching all the lights to the parallel circuit and testing them to make sure that they're turning on. I had to do a little bit of troubleshooting because I was having a little bit of difficulty with the one at the end so I had to pick it up, kind of replace it back, press it down very firmly just to make sure that it did have good contact with both sides of that copper tape. And also I did discover that kind of that battery cover with the the paper cover, it could be a little bit sensitive as far as finding just the perfect spot to press down to get all the lights to come on. So as you're seeing, I'm fiddling with this quite a bit just to get to the point where all of it works correctly. And finally, I have success in getting all three lights to come on when I press down on my battery holder. So now I'm going to move on to the part where I start to assemble the card. And I'm going I'm using my first piece of craft foam and I cut out the corner so that it would fit around that battery holder. So that's just a matter of cutting out a square in that corner. And because I was using craft foam that had adhesive on one side, I just have to add adhesive to the other one. I decided to use the liquid adhesive for the bottom part and that way I had some room to move it around and make sure that it fit as closely as possible to the lines I had drawn onto the cardstock. And because one piece of thin craft foam really isn't enough room to allow the top of the battery holder to stay out of contact with the battery except when you push down on it I needed a second layer. So I'm doing the same thing as far as adding the second layer other than I have to remove the adhesive, the backing adhesive from the fun foam before attaching the one on the top. And I had to be pretty careful about applying the one on top because there really isn't a lot of room for mistakes at that point. So now I'm kind of getting down to the, to the finish line where it starts getting a little bit easier to finish the whole thing. So I was testing to make sure that once I put the RN, the coral card stuck on top that I wouldn't have the battery holder sticking out. So as you can see, I trimmed off the edge of it to make sure that it wouldn't be seen. I also fiddled with where the fold was because it was sticking up a little bit too far, but it's just one of those minor adjustments that you have to make. It's kind of hard to make that perfect the first time around so this is just a matter of adjust making little adjustments as I went along and because I needed a way to make sure that the battery stayed in place without gluing it there I used a couple of pop-up dots in order to secure it in the corner I picked some small circle pop dots and I'm actually not going to remove the adhesive cover from the top because I don't want the paper on the top cover to stick to it. I just want it to be kind of there so that the battery is not going to easily fall out and it actually will not fall out that easily once I have adhered the card to the top. So now you can see what it looks like briefly when I turn the lights out. 
And now I'm getting down to creating the sentiments on the front and I'm using this interactive set from Heavy Doodle Stamps. It's called Interactively Yours and it was made to accommodate all sorts of different interactive cards, including a light up card. So I'm creating a sentiment for the bottom hand corner using the sentiment that says you light up my life, which seemed very appropriate for this card. So I used a piece of the same patterned card stock that I used in the bottom and we'll use again at the top. I didn't capture all the video when I created both uh, the sentiment at the bottom hand left side and the top, but I figured most of you probably already know how to stamp and create a sentiment and don't need to see it in this video. So what I'm showing you here is a couple of extra backgrounds I created from the same gel medium I used to create the lava lamps. I simply used a brush and spread it across some Yupo paper in order to create a very fun, glossy background that I plan to use on another project. So this, folks, is the completed interactive card. I hope that you have found this uh, tutorial informative and it may help you should you decide to do something similar yourself. I really appreciate you watching my videos, so if you enjoyed this, I'd appreciate you leaving me a thumbs up or a comment. And if you have not subscribed, please take time to do so if you'd like to see more of my videos. Thank you very much for watching.